Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're taking a look at why we get mask layers when using the new masking tools in Photo Raw 2026. To demonstrate this, I have a photo here of a pasture with some horses and, you know, we have the sky here. So I'm only going to demonstrate the mask layers and how they kind of work. I'm not going to make a pretty edit. So you've been warned. Now that we have all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start working with the mask. And I'm going to demonstrate in this video using the local tab, but this works the same in any of the places where you would use the masking properties or the tools. So just understand the concept and then you can apply it across on one, however you choose to work with your photos. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and click the sky mask because I want to select the sky and I'm just going to boost the exposure. And we have that as our edit. This is what we're used to inside of on one where you select something and then it applies the mask to that area. And that's essentially what we have here. Now, you'll notice that we have two areas and this is the place where I've been getting a lot of questions about the new masking tool and kind of the crux behind today's video. So what we have here is the target mask and I want you to think of this as the final output on our image. Now what makes up this final output is every mask that is underneath the mask layer. All right. So right now we only have the sky mask applied. So the final output, if I press the letter O, is just the sky being masked. Now, let's say I wanted to apply an exposure adjustment, the same adjustment, by the way, to the horses here. What I can do is click the plus icon and then hover over brush or any of these masking tools. I'm just gonna use the brush for simplicity's sake today. And you'll notice I have two options, add and subtract. Now with the newer version or the later release of the 2026 version, I think it's 2026.1, we now get a little icon as well as a little bit more information. So because I'm working inside of local adjustments, add is going to be the default. If I were in effects, subtract would be the default. And I'll explain that when we jump over to the effects section. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. And I get a black layer mask here because what I need to do is tell on one, where do I want to add this local adjustment? Well, I said I wanted to put it over the horses. So I'm just going to paint just like this over the horses. Now I get it. You would never really want to edit like that in real life. I just want to showcase what's happening with the mask layers. So if I press the letter O, you'll see that I'm now applying this adjustment in the sky as well as over here in the foreground where those horses were. Now, if you look over here under mask layers, you'll notice I've applied a new mask layer, which is this brush. Now, when you press the letter O and you are viewing your composite mask or your final output, you're actually viewing the target mask. So if I turn off this brush mask here, you'll notice that that goes away in the main mask. And then if I turn it back on, it comes back on. And then if I turn off the sky, you get the same result. The sky goes away and it updates the target mask because this is only going to show whatever mask layer you have activated here. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. I'm going to leave the grayscale overlay turned on so that way we can kind of look at what's happening as we build this up. So the next thing I'm going to add is a gradient mask because those are pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and add in a gradient mask and I'll pull this down. Now, you'll notice that if I pull this over the brush mask, then that brush mask kind of goes away. It also kind of goes away from the sky here as well. And what it's doing is 
this gradient is applying wherever I tell it to apply, but you'll notice that it's also changing our target mask up here. So if I go ahead and turn off the sky mask, well now I'm just applying the gradient and the brush mask in this one area. That's also updating our target mask. And if I turn the sky mask back on, then you can see it all comes back. Now, what this looks like in real life in our photo, if I press the letter O, we now have an adjustment down here at the bottom of the image, as well as in the sky and over here with these horses. So what that gives us is three layers that create our combined mask or our final output. All right, so now that we understand what's happening inside of the local adjustments, let's talk about how masking works inside of effects, because I think this is where a lot of people get confused. I'm going to go ahead and hit add filter, and I'm just going to apply a curves adjustment filter and just pull up on the midtones here just to brighten the image overall. So this is the effect that we have on the photo. Now, what I want you to notice when I apply an effect, I already get a white mask. And in masking, anywhere that you see white, that means the adjustment is going into that area. And anywhere that you see black, the adjustment is being removed from that area. So in this case, we have the adjustment going over the entire photo. So now what I need to do is tell on one where I don't want the adjustment to go because it's already going over the entire image. So if I come over here to mask layers and hit the plus icon, and then I'm just gonna add a gradient. Now notice on the effects section, when you hover over any of your options, the default is subtract. This is where you want to start. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click subtract, and that's going to remove that adjustment from one area of the image. And I'm just gonna make this really noticeable by going crazy with it. So you can see that I'm applying the curves adjustment to the bottom portion of the image. If I press the letter O to look at the masking overlay, this should come as no surprise. This is how we're used to seeing the mask work. Now, where effects gets a little tricky is when you add in an additional layer, all right? An additional mask layer. So if I click the plus icon, and actually let's just rotate this to put it over the sky again. So we do a similar effect to what we did earlier. We're gonna hit the plus icon and I'm gonna come down to the brush. And you would think, well, I should just select subtract because that's how it worked in the local adjustment. I just kept clicking the default one. Well, in the effects section, it doesn't work that way. Instead, you want to click add. And the reason is because now you have to apply in the areas where the mask, the main output, if I press letter O, the areas that are black, what we want to do is actually add the adjustment into this area. So now if I paint over it, you'll notice that I get white. And so if I press the letter O and I kind of miss the horses there, but you get the point. So whenever you work with effects, the very first layer or the very first mask that you apply is going to be a subtraction method. And then any other layer that you apply on top of that is going to be an add. So if I hit the plus icon, and let's say I wanna add in another gradient mask, I'm gonna come over to gradient, and instead of selecting subtract, I'm going to click add, and then I'm gonna press the letter O so we can see what we have here. I can rotate this and just pull it down, and you'll notice we're getting the exact same effect that we got earlier on the local tab. So if I press the letter O to look at that over the image, that is what's happening when it comes to masking. Now, what you have to keep in mind is the mask is really just you telling on one the areas you want to apply your adjustment to or the areas that you don't want your adjustment to be applied. 
So hopefully that helped to clarify a little bit of what's happening with mask glares versus the target mask inside of Alma Photo Raw 2026. Now, if you got questions about how this works, please leave them in the comment section below. I will do my absolute best to answer those for you. Now, if you'd like to save some money when shopping over at the On One website, consider using the coupon code FREEWILL10 until the end of November 2025. You'll save some money on top of whatever the discount price is at the time that you're on the website. Now, that is an affiliate coupon code, which means I make a small commission from everyone who uses it, but it's at no extra cost to you. It's a great way of supporting this channel, and it's a win-win for everyone. Now, if you want to learn how to use On One Photo Raw, consider signing up for a training call with me. A link for that can be found in the description box below. We can talk to the fullest extent of what you would like to about masking if this has not helped clear up the understanding of how masking works inside of Photo Raw 2026. And with that, until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.